farmed in that hill, a 26-acre sand lake had moved 450 feet to the southwest in 25 years. So they had to stabilize it and plant grass on it before they still mining. It actually took longer to get that hill to hold still than it did to build a mine. In the late 1930s, the CCC, the Major Conservation Board, started up its community, went 150 miles down the coast, all the way to the over coast, building sand fences, like a snow fence, five to six hundred feet back from the normal high tide line. Wind comes along, blows the sand up off the beach to the fence, created the dune and spill down there between the houses and the ocean. Prior to that time, no one could build on the ocean because it was simply get washed away. So what you see here today is an entirely different world than what the Wright brothers saw. Wilbur Wright was born in Millville, Indiana in 1867. Wilbur Wright was born in Dayton, Ohio in 1871. They had two older brothers, later on younger sister. Their father was with the United Brethren Church. He held various positions with that church over the years, eventually became a bishop or one of its leaders. But once they lived in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, he was like a circuit riding preacher. He would leave home and just go from church to church. Sometimes he'd be gone a month, sometimes even two months. But each time he came home, he would always bring his children to souvenir of that trip. Once he brought home what I call the toy helicopter. Of course, there was no such thing back then. That's what it reminds me of. It was simply something they could wind it up. It would shoot straight up into the air and fly all around. Orville and Wilbur were fascinated by that toy. They played with it so much and wore out their own. So they tried to make one of their own. They said it looked just like the original, but they could never get theirs to fly. So they made one four times as large. Never got that one to fly either. And they were all made to puzzle by that. Now their father taught them a lot of values they lived life by. We got to recognize the fact that they've known most of the time. It was left up to mom to do all the early racing of these boys by herself. Now when she was young, her father operated a wagon packer. She played there a lot. She learned a lot about woodworking and tools, mechanical things from that era. Even as a teenager, she could draw the plans for the wagon. And she was very fortunate. She got to go to college. Most of them didn't have that opportunity in the middle of the night. And she was a mathematical whiz. Anything to do with arithmetic and natural tools. She could speak four languages, English, French, German, and Latin. And she taught all of her children a lot about math and a lot about different languages. But she's also the one who taught them how to build pipes. Something her father had taught her. What you're looking at behind me is another one of the beautiful pipes that she saw. She taught them how to build sleds. And if you look at the bottom of her mind, And she always told them on those sleds to lay down flat because you're less wind resistant than when you sit up. They were the only people trying to fly a line down. Everyone else was even sitting up in what we would call a hand -like position. And it just goes on and on the things that she taught them at a early age that end up sitting right back right here or enabling them to be here. But she really didn't teach them all that just to grow up and build an airplane. She taught them a lot of things she knew were going to help them later on in life. When they left Cedar Rapids, they moved to Richmond, Indiana. There their father was the editor of a newspaper. And he gave Orville and Wilbur the job of delivering that newspaper every Saturday. When they first started, it was taking all day long using up all of their free time. So they got together and found a treadle sewing machine and invented, you might say, their own paper folding machine with it. One could sit there and open that treadle up and down, the other drop some papers in and out and come all rolled up, scoop them up, get out there and get them delivered. When they were always encouraged to do that type of thing. You need a tool, a toy, any item you might want, you should always try to make it yourself before you buy anything because if you can do that, you understand that item from the inside out and not just see the outside of something involved. So they were always encouraged to do those things for themselves. Now just before they left Richmond, Indiana, to go back to Dayton for the final time, Wilbur finished high school. But since they were getting ready to move, he decided not to go to graduation and get that diploma. He didn't really think he needed it anyway. He was taking correspondence courses in subjects not taught at the school, trigonometry and Greek. Why was he taking Greek? At that time, he wanted to follow his father into the ministry. Back home in Dayton, now Orville starts high school. And 
10 in the 11th grade. We did something we do not recommend today. This is not a very good idea. They lived in a different time period, a different era. He drops out of school. But he had a fairly good reason. You see, he was too busy to go. He already started operating his own afternoon newspaper and printing company. He would build his own printing press. But he, like Wilbur, would always take correspondence courses, go to libraries and research things when they had to know something or just wanted to know something. They never quit trying to learn. In 1891, they started reading about a man named Otto Lilienthal, a German bladder experimenter. Now here's a man strapping on a set of wings and jumping off the hills trying to fly. And the Wright brothers thought that was exciting. So they would read about this man in the time they could. Slowly but surely, he became one of their heroes. But in 1892, something new came out in America and it seemed like everybody had to have one. It was called a safety bicycle because both wheels were the same size, just like what we ride today. Now Orville and Wilbur raced the older bikes with that big wheel in the front and smaller in the back. And they were very good at it, but the new bicycles were easier to handle, so they started racing those. They became known all over the Midwest as great bicycle racers. But what they really understood about the new bike was this. They're making so many of these things, somebody's going to break one. That means somebody's got to fix it, so they opened the bicycle repair shop. That slowly evolved into a little bicycle factory where they actually made two grand of their own, and that's also where they made the money finance or efforts in the plan. When they started on this project, they refused to accept investments from anyone saying, we will not make money for anything until we can prove it will work. So they paid their own way. 1896, their hero, Otto Lilienthal, takes a glide off of the hill in Germany, hit the ground, he broke his neck, and he died from that fall. Now when the Wright brothers heard that, it really saddened them, but it also re-inflamed their thoughts about flight. So it was 